Halloween franchise, the mask worn by Michael Myers was actually a mask of William Shatner from Star Trek. This is a Spock mask, an original Dawn Post creation, I think from the uh, late 70s. Anyway, uh, I'm going to transform Spock into Michael Myers to create a singular effect. I think you're going to find it uh, quite effective and creepy. So uh, there's some stark differences though between Michael Myers mask and Spock. Um, the main difference would be the nose is too big and of course the pointy ears. We have no choice but to therefore get some scissors and I'm going to proceed to basically do some rubber surgery if you will, plastic surgery. For those Don Post fans and Spock fans, I'm sorry, I know this kills you. The fact is, these original Don Post masks of Spock are still quite available. It's the original William Shatner mask. They're very hard to find. At any rate, we're just going to basically cut off uh, the, the tip of the nose, like so. And we need to get it more, yes, like that, about the length of the original Myers or William Shapner mask. There's still a little bit of a protrusion here, but that's going to end up um, coming together, so we don't bother with that. None of the um, cutting or painting or the hair modeling later has to be overly precise because the effect we're going for is actually a sort of rough hewn um, raw uh, Myers mask. Nothing quite as polished as say uh, the Myers mask we saw in um, H2O or Resurrection. Uh, next on the chopping block is going to be the Spock ears. And uh, what we're going to have to do is cut pretty much just the tips. And we're going to kind of want to go rounded. Uh, there we go. And uh, they're still a bit long, but I could probably take off a little bit more from the back. We can't cut off too much because we need to leave enough rubber on there so we can mold it back together. So that's good enough for that side. We'll go ahead and uh, cut the other side now. Okay, I might have taken off more than I needed there, but you might agree with me, it does look better than the other side. So why don't I go ahead and a little bit more off in here. Stay off the back. Just trying to eliminate the angular impression. The next step is going to be um, perhaps the most challenging in our transformation. And uh, we're going to be putting this back together in the frame of Michael Myers with some special latex mold. But the first thing we want to do is take the nose portion that we cut off and uh, put it on the inside of the mask so we can have, while a much smaller nose than Spock's, enough of a bump in which we can bridge the latex through. So I'm going to simply take a little masking tape and uh, tape this nose um, steady on the inside, like so. And uh, it's a little more to the profile of Myers. There's still a little bit of edges um, that we can trim down here. Uh, the idea is to get the latex uh, round around the outside of the nose, but we want to try to leave the nostrils at the bottom. Uh, we just want to 
prepare it so the latex will go on flush and not have any very radical edges. Okay, so we're ready, we're ready to apply the latex the, to the nose. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and follow the similar process to the ears, uh, preparing it with a mixture of masking tape and the uh, remnants from the original croppings. At which point I'll show you what I've done. For the ears, I've actually decided to just uh, put some masking tape inside them, like so, uh, on the inside. And uh, now for the uh, now for the latex. So here's a uh, one quart of. Uh, mask latex. Um, this comes from, I got this from the Monster Makers store, a very useful store for mask building and uh, tweaking. Um, this stuff's actually very easy to work with. You can just grab a, um, it's kind of like a paintbrush uh, styrofoam piece. And I'm going to just go ahead and liberally um, apply this thickly to the outside of the nose and really try to get in the cracks. It's okay for now if it drips a little bit. We can um, we can get to that in a moment. But I'm gonna just kind of fill in these spaces here and get it on there as thick as we can. And uh, you know we're ultimately gonna be painting over it so uh, the idea is to really cover in the cracks more than try to get any, um, you know, super smooth shape. Now as that's um, starting to dry a little bit, at this point I'm going to go grab a, a napkin and um, clean up the drips. The stuff dries fast, but not super fast. It's really more of a few hours overnight. Again, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit smeared here and there. It'll actually just add to the end effect, you know, making it look like a rugged, more Rob Zombie type of rendition. Um, personally, I prefer the um, the earliest masks in the, in the first movie. And I actually like the mask a lot in H2O. Um, this one's going to be somewhere between the, the first movie and a Rob Zombie one, but very unique in its own right, uh, being coming from Spock. You can see now how it's already starting to coagulate, and I can load it on a little bit thicker. Ideally, we should, you know, parcel out this paint and not um, use the whole jar. Uh, we don't want to have it drying inside the jar because it's quite expensive but it's coming along here so I'm just going to continue to layer it up and uh, I'll show you when I'm uh, when I'm done with the nose and ears